Get ready and excited for World Adventure Day 2023. We hope you are all ready to take a trip to embark on a wonderful journey. Every step of the journey is a chance to discover new wonders and create unforgettable memories. We are all awaiting Jesus' soon return, and we are going to learn more about this amazing journey on World Adventure Day. We hope all of our adventurers can tag along as we prepare for this much-awaited trip. The Savior can see every heart can tear. Parents are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near Calvary. I lift. Kavari Kau, Kavari, yes, Kavari. I lifted it, Kavari. Surely Jesus is vain, rainy, yes, Kavari. Lifted it, Yes, Calvary. Oh, yes, Calvary. Oh, yes, Calvary. Parents are lifted at Calvary. Surely Jesus is very near. Oh, yes, he's very near. Parents are lifted. Dead at Calvary, yes, Calvary, oh, yes, Calvary, yes, parents are lifted at Calvary. 
Calvary, surely Jesus is very near. Let's bow our heads as we pray this morning. Father in heaven, we come before your presence in thanksgiving because you are faithful. The psalmist says, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And so, Father, it is in the presence and in the confidence of your presence that we approach the throne of grace. Mm. The writer of Hebrews reminds us that let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, knowing that we'll find help in our time of need. Oh, yes. Father, we thank you for the inspired word that reminds us that without Calvary, there's no way we can lift our burdens to. Amen. And so, Father, we come and lift our burdens before your presence, knowing that Christ is very near. Amen. There are those among us who are not feeling well, those who are sick, mm. those who are tormented mentally, mm. those who are tormented spiritually, those who have lost hope, mm. and those who see no way through their situations. Amen. But, Father... We're reminded of the children of Israel as they were encompassed about by mountains and hotly pursued by the, by the armies of Pharaoh. Mm. And before them was a Red Sea. Mm. You declared, Moses, lift up your rod mm. and the seas parted. Amen. Father, we want to thank you that even in our hopelessness, mm. you have a way out. Amen. So we pray that in this hour, Father, as you shall speak to us through your man servant, May those burdens be lifted up. Mm. And we thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit in this edifice. Mm. That Lord, after all is said and done, we may say indeed, Emmanuel was among us. Mm. Bless your man servant as he speaks to us. Mm. Imbue him with the Holy Spirit. And may words of comfort and life come forth like rivers of living waters from Amen. his mouth. Amen. And indeed, may we declare that God is still in our presence. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Uh, I want to acknowledge even the leaders uh, of the church, uh, the elders, the adventurer uh, directors, and all the facilitators for the splendid job which they are doing because uh, this is beautiful. And I want to acknowledge that the children uh, are, are, looking, uh, are looking awesome. What does the church say? Amen. Yes, this is beautiful because uh, uh, they are well decorated and uh, this is showing life. And for them to be given the platform, it shows that the leadership is uh, truly, truly um, uh, helping and to see that they pass on the button to see that the children are edified as well. So thank you so much, uh, City East Church. May the good Lord bless you. So boys and girls who are here, uh, remember that there was a girl in Acts chapter 12, Acts chapter 12 called Rhoda. Do you remember the girl? She was bold. Yes, uh, she was, uh, 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 your, she was uh, of your age, if I'm not mistaken. So the disciples were scared because they were afraid of being persecuted. Peter was in prison uh, by that time, and then uh, the, the disciples were now hiding uh, in the other room there, knowing that Peter is going to die tomorrow. No one knew where they were, I suppose. And then they had a knock because Jesus... Uh, 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 Peter was miraculously rescued from the prison by angels and then he went straight to where the disciples were and she went and, and he went like go, 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 the disciples knowing very well that no one knows where they were hiding. They are all afraid of dying or being killed. Now I'm starting to imagine disciples hiding under the the bed maybe others going into the wardrobe and then this little girl Rhoda going straight to the door Co, co, co. who is it the adults are now hiding using sign language i suppose who, who is it who is it peter it's peter and then she runs to say, yeah. it's Peter. 
in Shona, they will say, who doubt you go at this? Go and ask again. You can see them sending a, a little girl to inquire. We said the door, but we know that when knocks, uh, uh, when someone knocks at night, dead usually comes out, chest out, eh? head high, with his muscles protruding, going to the door and saying, who is it now? But this time it was different. Dead was hiding. Fathers were hiding. Waiting for the little girl to answer and tell them what was happening. And then they said, it's, it's Peter. And then it's Peter. Until they were convinced the girl was bold enough. So I know that this is a powerful lesson for us boys and girls. In such a time, we need to be bold for Jesus. There are times when our parents are actually scared to evangelize. At times, our parents are scared to, to talk about Jesus. But be bold enough and say, our Jesus is coming back again. Are we together, boys and girls? Yes. Thank you so much. So now, yes, uh, this was uh, your treat. So allow me to get uh, into the subject of the day as well. We're going to say our verses uh, in order. Um, the topic is saying the journey. What is the topic of the day? The journey. Yes, what is it? In what? There's something then the journey. You want to try? Yes? A wonderful journey. But a wonderful journey cannot be a wonderful journey when we are moving while we are defiled. So children, the other word for undefiled is we are moving clean. Are we together? Because there is a journey uh, which is upon us because most people think that children are saints. Amen? Most people think that children are undefiled. Children are sinless, but uh, uh, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short from the glory of, of God. If we give your child who is three or four your body, she remains or he remains with uh, her brains or his brains, you wouldn't trust your child with that body, I'm telling you. You wouldn't be at peace. Knowing that your child is huge and brainless. Because he's going to give you a, a, a Tory time. She will be clapping you like no man's business. She will be kicking you. Because she is or he is sinful and with a big body. So God is actually merciful to us parents because our sinful young boys and girls are, have, got, have got small bodies. They've got small bodies. And they are limited because they cannot jump over the wall. They might, they, uh, they might not even jump over the gate because of the limitation in their bodies. Are we together? No. Yes. So they are, they are children yet uh, they are sinners. So our verse of the day is from Proverbs 22, verse 6. Uh, let us hear the verse of the day. Proverbs 22, verse 6. This is our departure point so that we go rest. In the yes. Train up a child in the way he should go. Yes. Kindly read again. Train up a child in the way he should go. Yes. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. So, parents and children, in this journey together, going to heaven undefiled, the father, the mother needs to train, and the adventurer needs to be trained. Right. Accept training. Embrace to be trained or to be taught by your leaders and your parents because this is a journey. But for it to be wonderful, for it to be undefiled, we need to move together. 
So in the book of Daniel, we see that the Hebrew boys and Daniel himself, they were, they were lured to take the delicacies from the king's table. But they said, no, we cannot defile our bodies. We need to be clean. Rather, with Jesus or with God, than to take all the delicacies, things that defile our bodies without Christ. That was their mandate. To say we cannot be defiled. Why am I to talking about defilement today? It's because what the devil cannot kill, he sometimes defiles. All right. All right. He knows that in the Bible, there might not be an inscription which says, Mbanche. There might not be an inscription which says, Mtoriro. There might not be an inscription which says medicine or any other harmful substance. Yes, it might not be there. And the child can say, ah, I'm safe because this thing is not in the Bible. So Satan counters on that to defile us so that we can be further away from God. Once you are defiled, you feel unhappy. You don't congregate with others. Family worship, we are not there. You withdraw from services. We withdraw from things that call the name of God because you are defiled. That's why Job, the Job now, uh, the rich man Job. The Bible says the wife came sometime and said, just curse God and die. He had sores all over his body. He was now weak. He was now frail. And then the wife says, curse God and die. Job knew that, no, if I curse God, I will be defiled and be unclean. And God will be far away from me. I would rather die in my souls with God than to be clean without God. So he stood the ground and says, I cannot curse God and be defiled and be unclean. So this is the devil's a way of trying to catch us and our children. But praise be to God. Praise be to God. Because there are people who have seen the schemes of the devil himself. So train up a child. Tell them that this world is defiling, Satan is defiling them. Tell the children that things are not well, it's no longer business as usual. It's no longer business as usual. Uh, just allow us to see the things that defile our children. Psalm 119 verse 37. Psalm 119 verse 37. And then, yes. Amen. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things. Amen. Wait there. So children, the adventurers which are here, for the root as we are on a journey or in a journey towards heaven, turn away your eyes from useless things. The Bible is not saying what is being shown maybe on TV, be it on TikTok, be it on YouTube, at times parents might not be there. And you might, uh, 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 you might get a gadget from your friend at school. You might get a gadget from your friend somewhere. In the absence of your parents, your parents will be far. But for us to reach the place the destination as we are in a journey. Turn away your eyes from things that are useless. Pray to God that God help me to turn away my eyes. These things are, 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 they are useless to me for you to reach heaven. Amen? Amen? There are many useless things that might affect your mind. All corners, the secular worldview is affecting us. But praise be to God because of his messages of the day. 
How are we going to turn our eyes? The children are asking, the adventurers are asking, how are we going to turn away our eyes from worthless things when our parents are sponsoring the addictions? Yes. Yes. So the best way to kill some of the addictions affecting our children is to stop sponsoring it. Okay. You've got money, right? And you are crying the most. Hey, my child, hey, oh my, ah, uh, hey, ah, uh, about which quarrel, hey, this, that, uh. Who is in the business of sponsoring now? So, children, some of you, I know that your parents might not be godly. I know that your parents might not know the God whom you know, the God of Rhoda. There might be items and some uh, characters on TV or in the channels that you watch because you're just but a child. You've got no power over what you see, but turn away your eyes from things that are useless so that the journey can be clean, so that we can reach heaven together. Just allow me the last verse, maybe. Uh, Deuteronomy 18, verse 10, so that we know what's happening with our world nowadays. We are in a journey. We are on a journey. But is the journey clean? Verse 10. Yes. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, Wait or there. a sorcerer. Thank you so much, my elder. We've got little witches here. Hey, hey. And the Bible is saying, may, ah, uh, kindly read the first part. You, they shall not be found among you, anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. Oh, yes. Or one who practices witchcraft. So to practice witchcraft, the others say by beholding, at times we become changed, amen? Mm. But the programs now, we, we, which we are showing, our children, we are creating what you are creating what you call modern witches. Because some children here believe actually in good magic. There is bad magic when they watch maybe Papa Smurf, where there is Gargamel, the bad guy now, the villain who has got bad spells. And then there is the blue smurf now, who is good with the good magic. At times, our children prefer the gold magic. But magic is magic because it's witchcraft. Yes. So what are we exposing our children to in such a time when we are in a journey? We are on a journey. Is the journey clean? Is the journey unteve? That in the Exodus, when children of God were going to the promised land. It says that all of them went out, but I want to believe that there are others which were now successful who remained there, changed their names, knowing that if we go to Canaan, uh, we won't be recognized. I want to believe that some Israelites in the journey promised to go out, to move out, they remained in the foreign land. With their names changed, like what we do maybe when you go to SA Times. I, I, I'm, I'm gift shoko. You might find me uh, as, as, as gifty. Eh, botata. Hezo unkomeni. You want to change the hezo shorobo. Hezo utomani. But you only have ushamini. Ah, people change their names. They do all sorts of things. So if they are doing it now, it's because we know, but there's a possibility that when they were on a journey to the promised land, there are some people who remained behind because they didn't want to go with others. Why? Because defilement comes with contentment or defilement comes with you uh, 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 being comfortable 
behind enemy lines. Amen? Mm. Being comfortable behind enemy lines is like uh, the, the frog in the pot. You have ever heard of such a story? No. Yes, uh, uh, I heard. Uh, uh, I, 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 there was a story talking about uh, a frog in the pot. But I didn't uh, uh, take it seriously, though, because at times I believe that a fine work of art, when people st tell stories, there should be maybe a technical excellence. Uh, 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 this thing should confirm and affirm itself that this thing is on point. And the good uh, 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 art or work of art is shown by intellectual content. That thing, when I say intellectual content, uh, it must always speak the truth about reality. Amen? So now this frog, I'm not sure who put it in the pot. I'm starting to wonder, how could a frog jump from the floor into the pot? Or maybe the, the stove was uh, that of, a, of, of bachelors who are white college. You see, they just put a, a flat two-place two stove on the floor. And then they switch off the, uh, the, uh, uh, the plates. Then they leave water. I don't know what, what happened. What made the frog to, to get into the water? I don't know, into the pot. But it says that uh, after some time when the occupants of the house came, they lit the stove, but the frog still sat there comfortable behind enemy lines. The water started to be a bit warmer, but the frog didn't move. The frog kept on enjoying and relaxing in the pot, not knowing that things are changing. It's no longer a business as usual until the frog was cooked. So this is what is happening today. We are enjoying to be, we are enjoying behind enemy lines just like Samson himself, who became too comfortable in the house of Delilah, in the room with Delilah, until he lost his eyes. So for us not to, to be deferred, boys and girls and parents in this journey, let us not be too comfortable behind enemy lines. Be too comfortable with what we are watching. Be too comfortable with the secular worldview. But to understand that the devil, if he cannot kill us, he wants to defile us. And who is going to survive the defilement? Look at the words our children say, our adventurers say nowadays. We are teaching them to be like Jesus. But look, look at the sentence construction. If you offend a child nowadays, he or she is like, oh, but Jesus on the cross, when he, when he was about to die, when he was offended, his first word, first construction word, we was, oh, forgive them. But our children now, their sentence construction, starting with an F, is jaw-dropping. So, allow me to say that even if there was a possibility for the children of God to remain in Egypt when others were in a journey or in a journey, they missed out because Canaan was for real, amen? As we are moving, don't move alone as a parent. Don't move alone, adventurers. Let's move together in this journey. And appreciate that there are darts flying in the night, flying in the afternoon, to deviate our ways, to deviate us from seeing the real home in this journey. Stay put. Stay put and know that, no, I want to be clean in this journey. I want to pray for my mother to be clean in this journey. I want to pray for my father to be clean in this journey. 
I know of some children who tell me because uh, we work with children most of the time. They say, Pastor, yesterday, uh, uh, mommy was, um, and daddy was, um, daddy took a frying pan to mommy, pa, on the head, and daddy to retaliate with a pot, pa, and there was chaos in the house. Said, so what did you do? So I don't know, Pastor. It's even hard to stay in that home. You say, okay, at times, when the going gets tough, try to, try to initiate a prayer time. At times, say, oh, it's, it's prayer time. It's now 8 o'clock. And start a song. Jesus is my... What, what is that song? Jesus is my Oh, I'm not alone. I want to see the face of your father when he's like, mm, how is he going to see, sing that song? If your mother is like this, mm, how is he going to see, how is she going to sing that song? So imagine your parents now going like, Jesus is my best friend. Jesus is my best friend. Oh, I'm not alone. Oh, I'm not. It's embarrassing. So she was like, okay, I, I, I'm going to try that one, Pastor. But I don't know if she succeeded enough. But all I can say is we must move with our families in this journey undefiled. Amen? Amen. With our youths, with our sisters, with our brothers. Because our youths, as we conclude now, there is that game where, uh, 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 where we play. It's, it's playing house. Have you ever seen such? Where we say it's playing house. That's where most of our brothers and sisters who are not yet married are, are being defiled from, okay? It's called playing house. Yes. Someone becomes a father. They select you. You are now the father from Mahumbwe there. And then you are given about, and then you choose wives. This is my wife, this is my wife, this is my wife, this is my wife. And we've got seven wives. <laughs> and then you grow up now, it's a youth choir. Because uh, a habit brings out a character. It's a youth choir. Now when you see all the girls in the choir because of the maumbwe, you think that all of them are your wives. And when you grow, it's in the blood. So the best way to be sharpened is when, when, when we are still adventurous like this, amen? The journey starts when you are small. To know that, no, we must be clean. Even in Mahumbri, one wife, one husband. Even in Mahumbri, you are not a cat, you are a boy. Yeah. Even in Mahumbri, you are not a monkey, you are a man or a person. Amen. Know your worth. I know some of you boys and girls in, in, in here, you look down upon yourself, you have no confidence because every time in my home, you are always a dog. <laughs> and when your parents say you are special, you're like, oh, I'm not special, I'm a dog. <laughs> so as our verse stated from the beginning, that train up a child in the way he should go, always conscientize them. That even if people say you are a citopon, you are, you are dark chocolate, you are very dark, you are still a child of God. Sure. I used to think that those who are, who've got a, a, comp a, a complexion which is like mine, which is a bit dark, I, I, th I thought maybe uh, those are the ones who are victims. Only to realize a bit later that even those who are light skinned are now victims. Juke, 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 juke. And that person is not comfortable. 
But if you know from your parents and from the biblical teachings that you are special, you won't have any problems. Even boys from the wood, when you are maybe 13 or 15, there are boys who've got a tendency to see you in uniform and to say, wow, wow, look at you with that satchel and that uniform. Wow, wakabatana. Just say, I know. And you see the church, the face change. You know, my mother told me that. My father always tells me that I'm handsome. I'm beautiful. But if you don't know that you're beautiful, when you grow to be like your sisters, or to be, uh, when a boy tells you that, oh, you look beautiful, you're going to give that boy uh, some attention because you, you are not sure yourself. But if you're sure that you are uh, beautiful, then what's the problem? I know. And then you keep on walking. Ta, ta. Because you know yourself better. Are we together? So take seriously the counsel of your parents, uh, uh, adventurers. Are we together? Because in this journey for us to reach heaven, we must move together. This verse, teach uh, 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 your children. It's not for parents only. You, children, be teachable, okay? Be teachable because we need to reach heaven as clean as possible. Satan must not smile, must never smile. He must know that adventurers are coming in. Who says today, as an adventurer, I'm not perfect. I steal things. I'm not saying confess to me. You take your father's car keys, you hide them. At times your father is let for work and is given a warning, but he cannot even uh, expose you to it that, hey, my daughter is naughty. You just get a warning. Right now he's on the final warning because of you. Stealing car keys, stealing even your mother's phone, Checking on the internet, on the open browser, where you know that you are not limited. Who says, I want to be a changed boy, I want to be a changed adventurer? Let me see. Who says, I want to do better than I used to? I don't want to be defied. I want to move with Christ. Because soon and very soon, the heavens will part. And something glorious than the normal glory shall be seen. Jesus himself with angels coming for you. I'm seeing adventurers lifting up their hands. Are there parents who say, oh, Father, Jesus, help us to take our positions thoroughly to make sure that our children are prayed for, to make, that, to make sure that our children are nourished in the spiritual truths. Who says, I want to do my part? I want to do my honest part so that we can move together in this journey. Amen. Amen. I'm seeing hands. Yes, thank you so much. And the youths, are you there? Who says, no, I've got a habit which I took from my earlier ages, which is affecting me even now. I'm stealing things even at college. Universities are seeing fire because of me, but no one knows about it. May the good Lord bless you all. Let us all stand for a word of prayer. Let us all stand for a word of prayer. Allow us to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for reminding us that we are all sinners. Thank you for reminding us that the devil is defiling us, knowing very well that if we are defiled, we will move away from Christ. But Lord, forgive us our
adventurers which adventure in the things of God, not to adventure because you say we can do all things through Christ who gives us the power and the strength. So give us the power to shun on evil. Give us the power to say no, no to Satan. Give us the power to say yes to God. Give us the power and the boldness of purity because the time is almost at hand. We are on a journey, Father. Heaven is real. We are going to have eternity. We are going to eat the delicacies prepared by Jesus himself. We are going to walk on the streets of gold. We are going to have glittering crowns. We are going to live forever and ever. Oh, Father, amend our ways and may you forgive us our sins as children. Above all, as adults, Father, adults which are here, parents which are here, Lord, we want to be with our children in this soon coming home, Father. It's going to be something disappointing to find ourselves in heaven and our children lost. Give us the power to do our duty, to stand on the post, to deliver our children from the dungeons of sin. And ourselves, Father, we are defiled each and every day. We cannot even control what we give our children. We are actually sponsoring our children. The dressing we are sponsoring. The what they are watching we are sponsoring. Help us, oh Father, so that we can be a better people. On this journey, in the journey to heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The last prayer. Let's pray. Our kind and heavenly Father, I want to thank for this day so you can us. One thank for giving us this afternoon. Maybe it us as we'll be fighting out. Maybe it us and protect us throughout the day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.